In this video, we're going to talk about the NAV 1.5 channel or our sodium channel. And we're going to use this video as our starting point uh, to dive deeply into the kinetics and mechanism of action of our sodium channel blockers. So in order to appreciate what our sodium channel blockers do or their difference in function, we have to appreciate the structural properties of the NAV 1.5 channel. So to understand the NAV 1.5 channel, we have to recognize that there are a number of different domains and within each of those domains, there are six different segments. So the channel is made up of four domains. So we have four different domains that make up the channel. When we look at them in 3D space, they're forming basically a channel or a circular channel, which will have a pore in the middle, which can be open and closed. What we want to recognize is that these S5 and S6 segments are actually the segments that are creating the physical pore of the channel. So the S5 and S6 segments are creating the physical pore. And in the resting state or the closed state, they are going to be physically touching each other. So they are closed uh, in that state. So we have the S5 and the S6 segments that live in the center here, which are going to create the physical pore. So we can open or close those S5 or S6 channels or segments in order to open or close the channel. The other piece that we have to look at here is that we have an S4 segment in each of these domains, and the S4 segment is responsible for voltage sensation. So the S4 segment is the voltage center, and that is what's going to give uh, this channel its voltage-gated properties. So the S4 segment will respond to changes in voltages, which will actually cause a physical change in the S5 and S6 segments, which will either open or close the pore. So S4 is going to be responsible for voltage sensation, Movement of S4 is going to lead to physical changes in S5 and S6, and those physical changes in S5 and S6 are what will actually potentially open that pore and allow for sodium influx. The other piece that's important to recognize is that we can gate this channel. So we can actually physically gate this channel, and that is done through this IFM motif. So this, uh, unlike the S5 and S6 segments, which can open and close the pore, we can see inactivation through the IFM motif here, which will physically gate the channel or act like a bar that goes across um, the actual pore itself. So picture a bar that's going across the pore itself, which is not allowing for sodium to pass through. So two ways to manage this channel. One would be through physical changes in the S5 and S6 segments, which open the pore and allow for sodium uh, influx. The other piece would be that we can uh, bar or unbar or gate or ungate this channel through that IFM motif. So just to recap what we want to be mindful of, four domains. In each domain, we have six segments. Those six segments are relevant because they create the pore and the voltage sensation of this channel. So S5 and S6 segments are what are creating the pore itself. The S4 segment is what is going to essentially physically respond to voltage changes, which can help open and close that pore. And then between S6 and S1, we have our IFM motif, which can be the physical gate to this channel. So a couple ways of opening and closing this channel. So in order to appreciate how these things function together, we can take a look at what happens when we activate this channel. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is activation. And we know that activation is typically happening as resting membrane potential uh, is depolarized. So the membrane will depolarize to around negative 90 to negative 70 millivolts which what is happening there is sodium is entering the cell and creating a more positive environment inside the cell. So important to recognize that during depolarization, we have sodium influx, which is creating a more positive intracellular environment. And what happens when we have a more positive intracellular environment is we are going to create a physical push or an electromagnetic push up against this S4. So we know that our light forces are going to repel each other. So what will happen here is as we see depolarization, this positive force is actually going to put upward pressure on that S4 segment, or we see electromagnetic pressure on that S4 segment, which will push it outwards. So what we're seeing is during uh, activation, we have depolarization, and that depolarization is creating an electromagnetic force, which pushes outwards the S4 segments. So we have an outward force on that S4 segment. And it's that outward force on the S4 segment, which is going to lead to a physical change in our S5 and S6 six segments. So essentially this change, so as we see the S4 segment move outwards, so picture this moving outwards, you can see this link here in between the S4 and S5 segment, that's actually going to tug on the S5 segment. So we see that this outward force is going to tug on the S5 segment. And as a result, we're going to see a physical change. So we see physical basically restructuring of the pore, and this will open the pore or open the channel. So if we take a look at that over here, what we can see is as we have depolarization or the cell becomes more positive, 
those positive ions will push on the S4 segments, which I've drawn in red here. Those S4 segments are going to physically move outward. And as we move those S4 segments outward, we're actually going to pull on the S5 and S6. So we're going to tug on S5 and S6, which is going to pull the channel open and we will no longer be physically obstructed. So as we open this channel, this will allow our sodium to now rush in. So as we open the channel, sodium can now make its way through the pore uh, and enter the cell. So activation is reliant on the S4 segment, which will respond to increased positivity in the cell, which will electromagnetically push out on the S4 segment that will tug on this S5 and S6 segment, which will physically open this pore. Um, so we have that allosteric control which leads to modifying the channel and channel confirmation and opening of that channel. So that's how we see depolarization, or that's how activation during depolarization is going to lead to uh, rapid sodium influx and the voltage-gated ga nature of this channel. So as you can see, as voltage changes, leads to pressure on S4, S4 tugs on the S5, S4, S5 segment, which pulls open the S5, S6 segment and allows for sodium to enter. If we think about the responsibility or what is happening as a result, this is what gives us phase zero of our myocardial action potential. So if we think about our myocardial action potential, it looks something like this. What we're seeing or what is being driven by this exact response that we're looking at is this segment. So as we see that opening of the sodium channel and sodium can rush in, phase zero is created as sodium rushes in. So this whole phase here is what's responsible for this. So we can say that this creates phase zero of our myocardial action potential. Now what happens next is called inactivation. And we are going to differentiate here between inactivation and deactivation. So inactivation is driven by both time and resting membrane potential. So this is typically taking milliseconds and that millisecond of time passing is one of the reasons why we see inactivation and our membrane potential spiking or becoming much more positive is the other reason why we see inactivation. And inactivation serves the role of not allowing the sodium channel to stay open for too long, which is important for refractory of the sodium channel and preventing too much sodium from entering the cell and which can cause some consequences like too much intracellular calcium. So if we had too much sodium in the cell, the sodium calcium symporter may not work as well and we could get calcium overload. So inactivation is protective for a couple of reasons. And like I said, it's time and membrane potential based. So what happens as time passes, so we see milliseconds of time pass and resting membrane potential becomes much more positive, the segment between S6 and S1 in the D3 and D4 domains is going to actually swing upwards and block the channel. So the IFM motif, which is the segment or basically the uh, piece that lives in between the S6 and S1 segment in between domain three and four, swings up like a gate or a bar and prevents uh, sodium from passing through the pore, even though the pore might be open. So when we're looking at inactivation, it is guided by time and voltage. And as time passes and voltage increases, or we start to see an increase in resting membrane potential, what we watch is this IFM motif closes the channel, or it's going to swing up and close the channel. And that's called inactivation. So as that IFM motif is swinging up and closing the channel, that is inactivation. And again, we know that this serves a couple of roles. One is this is what is creating the refractory period. So it's this uh, swinging up and closing of the channel. So we can picture that as like a bar that now is obstructing access and it is going to provide absolute refractory so this would be a time when we cannot open the channel again which is important for the health of the sodium channel and is going to prevent uh, calcium overload so it serves a couple of uh, purposes here so it also prevents calcium overload in terms of recovery we see release when we have repolarization so this bar will stay in, uh, in place until we uh, go back to near resting membrane potential. So uh, release doesn't occur until we're back to around our uh, negative 80 to negative 90 millivolts. Some of the relevance of this is going to apply to our conversation about our uh, sodium channel blockers. So our class one antiarrhythmics, especially our class one B antiarrhythmics, preferentially bind in the inactivated state. So those antiarrhythmics are targeting this uh, channel when it is particularly inactivated by this IFM motif. And what we know is that ischemic tissue remains in the inactivated state uh, more. So that kind of allows the 1B antiarrhythmic to target our ischemic cells uh, more readily.
Now, the other thing that we can talk about is deactivation. And deactivation is different than inactivation. Deactivation is going to occur when the pore closes. So here we can be, or we can have inactivation while the pore is still open. So deactivation is going to be more readily related to our S4 segment moving back inwards and our cell moving back into the default position where we have closure of those S5 and S6 segments where that allosteric pull is gone and the gate is no longer open and the channel is no longer open. So what we see happening in deactivation is we need to have the, we have resting membrane potential uh, return to normal. So deactivation is occurring as our RMP is going to hit our negative 90 millivolts again. And what is going to happen there is we are going to see a reversal of the allosteric forces on the S4 segment. So the S4 will return to normal. And as the S4 returns to normal, so does the S5 and S6. So if uh, S4 is returning to normal, that means that S5 and S6 also are going to return to normal. And that means that we will start to see blockage or those segments returning to normal are going to create the pressure on the pore and the pore is going to now be closed. So it is these uh, items together, which leads to pore closure, or we start to see the pore close. So the state of this channel is going to be partially related to our refractory periods. So we know that as we have that IFM motif in place, we can't have another impulse, which will guide our absolute refractory period. So if the IFM motif is in place, then there's really no way that we can have activation of that sodium channel, which will guide our absolute refractory period. Uh, so we'll mark that with an A here. And then as we progress back towards our normal action potential, as the uh, sodium channel is going to head towards its resting state, we would enter our relative refractory period. And then finally, we would be back totally at rest uh, and be able to have normal function. So as the IFM motif is becoming released and the pore is entering the deactivated state or heading back towards rest, we'll see the relative refractory period and eventually we'll get back to that full negative 90 millivolts. The IFM gate will be off. We'll see the S5 and S6, seg S5 and S6 segments back to their normal position and the S4 segment will be ready to respond again to our change in resting memory potential and we'll be able to have another impulse. So um, to walk through the process again, when we look at activation, we start to see uh, sodium entering the cell and creating a more positive resting memory potential. That more positive resting memory potential is going to push up on the S4 segment uh, and will have a physical impact through that S4, S5 linkage, causing the S5 and S6 segment to basically be tugged on or tug open. As they tug open, that is what's going to allow sodium to enter into the cell. So as this channel opens or the pore opens, sodium can have influx into the cell. And very shortly after this, as we see this rapid spike in resting memory potential and time passes, so time being open passes, the IFM motif uh, that lives between S6 and S1 in the D3 to D4 domain is going to swing closed like a hinge. So it swings closed, closes our channel regardless of the state of the pore. So the pore is open here, but the IFM motif is now blocking and preventing sodium from entering into the cell. This is going to be very closely related to the absolute refractory period because the cell, the pore can no longer function. As time passes and we start to see the resting memory potential being reestablished by the sodium potassium pump, then we will hit our negative 90 millivolts again, which will prevent having any allosteric changes to the S4 segment. S4 segment will return to normal, which will pull the S5 and S6 seg segments back to normal and the pore will close. After both of those things happen, we hit that negative 90 millivolts, we'll see that IFM motif relief, uh, release and the cell will go back to its resting state or the sodium channel will go back to its resting state. So what we can see here is a flowchart that basically talks about these different states. So when we start to have pacemaker fire and sodium begins to enter these cells, we start to see sodium influx, which is going to create a more positive resting memory potential. That more positive resting memory potential is going to cause allosteric push on the S4 segment, which will push it up and cause a physical change or tug on the S5, S6 segment. This is where the pore opens and we start to see depolarization. So this is where we would have massive depolarization and we would hit our peak in our action potential. From there, time and this peaking, peaking of the resting memory potential is going to lead to the IFM motif swinging into place. So it basically blocks the pore. And this is where we would see closure or absolute refractory. So this is, we know, going to cause complete uh, blockage. And this is where we would see ab our absolute refractory period. We will then progress towards repolarization. And as we progress towards repolarization, the IFM motif will swing out of place around negative 80 to negative 90. And as we hit that negative 90, the S4 uh, segment will return to normal. And that will stop 
tugging on the S5 to S6 segment, which will then close the pore and the channel will again be at rest. So in here, in this segment here, is where we're starting to see our relative refractory period before we go back to rest, and then we'll enter the resting state. So this will become relevant because we'll talk about binding sites. So when we look at our sodium channel blockers, we will want to talk about where specifically they're going to be binding as well as when they're binding. So certain sodium channels are going to bind at different times. So they're typically going to be time and state dependent. That means that some will preferentially bind while the IFM motif is in place. So that would be a inactivated channel versus some that are going to prefer the channel at rest or well deactivated. The last thing I wanna again drive the point home is that uh, inactivation is when the IFM motif is physically obstructing the channel and not allowing sodium to enter. And deactivation is occurring when we have the S4 segment returning to normal and the S5 and S6 segment returning to normal and the pores physically closing as a result of structural changes. So again, important to rec recognize here that when we're looking at this piece, this is inactivation. Well, this part of the flowchart is going to relate specifically to deactivation. So our next video will focus on sodium channel blockers and how they're actually going to function within this unit.